coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. A man is arrested for shooting a drone. The FAA drone ID marking change is now in effect. And the drone light show returns to AirVenture 2019. One of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Welcome to AMA's Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. I'm Skylar Vanell. Our top story of the day, a Suffolk County, New York man was arrested on Saturday for shooting a drone out of the air in St. James. Members of Missing Angels Long Island is an organization that searches for missing pets, was using a Mavic 2 Zoom drone to search for a dog when the drone stopped responding around 4.45 p.m. The group used the drone's GPS to determine the exact location. But after an investigation, Gerard Chastain used a shotgun to fire three shots into the air from his yard, striking the drone. The 26-year-old was charged with criminal mischief and prohibited use of a weapon. He is set to appear in court. Under the federal aviation regulations, shooting at any aircraft, including a drone, is a federal offense and poses heavy fines. The FAA has not responded if they will take action. In the next Drone Minute, we'll take a look at a few of the stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Drones are making it easier for rescuers to locate skiers and others who may have been caught in an avalanche in remote areas, increasing the chances for survival up to 50 percent. The Czech Mountain Rescue Service uses a robo-drone Kingfisher aircraft equipped with cameras and an avalanche transceiver to locate buried skiers. If skiers do not carry the device, aircrafts with thermal and multispectral systems can help locate the avalanche victims. Australian UAV manufacturer Carbonics has partnered with UAV maintenance supplier Robotic Skies by giving operators access to a worldwide network of more than 150 certified repair stations across 35 countries. Back in 2017, Carbonics was the first drone manufacturer to commercialize a sub 55 pound power lift drone in the Australian market. Market. The company has been looking for a global UAV maintenance specialist with the aviation skills and a global network backing to support its international sales demand. The Impossible Aerospace US-1 made its first public appearance. Back on February 8th, during a police standoff at a Denny's in Campbell, California, they used the US-1 to provide a regular perimeter scan and it had more consistent video footage than the county's helicopter. The drone had an accurate aerial view of the perimeter, roof, and exits of the building, and it helped police arrest the suspect peacefully. The drone is equipped with thermal and optical sensors and has a 90-minute battery life. Drone Expo International has announced the Drone Expo East. It will be the largest and most diverse event of its kind in the eastern portion of the United States. Over 20,000 enthusiasts and 400 exhibitors are expected to attend, with 10 professional educational tracks planned with keynote speakers, seminars, and panel discussions. Drone Expo East will be held at the Atlantic City Convention Center from June 27th through the 30th. 30th. On February 25th, the FAA has a new interim final rule that requires small drone owners to display the FAA-issued registration number on the outside of an aircraft. Back in 2015, the FAA first required registration of small drones. The agency mandated that the registration markings be readily accessible and maintained in readable condition. The rule granted some flexibility by allowing the markings to be placed in an enclosed compartment, like a battery case, but it needed to be accessed without the use of tools. Law enforcement officials and the FAA's interagency security partners have expressed concerns about the risk, saying an explosive device might be concealed and pose the risk to first responders when they open the compartment and find a drone's registration number. The FAA believes the action will enhance safety and security by allowing a person to view the unique identifier directly without handling the drone. The FAA has issued this requirement and is inviting the public to comment now through March 15th. 
To submit your comments, go to regulations.gov and search for external markings requirement for small unmanned aircraft. And our final story of the day. Last year at the EAA Air Venture, the dazzling drone light show made its debut. At this year's world's greatest aviation celebration, more than 100 lighted drones will take flight during the night air shows on July 24th and 27th. The Michigan-based Great Lakes Drone Company will use LED-equipped drones to perform a 10-minute custom-designed The History of Flight show. They are one of two U.S. companies authorized by the FAA for these displays. The 67th annual EAA Fly-In Convention is July 22nd through the 28th at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. You can go to their website for more details. And that wraps up our show for today. Be sure to tune in next week as we welcome our new Airborne host, Sophie Herlock, to the A&N family. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. And for real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime, head on over to aero-news.net. And for more information on the exciting hobby drone world over at modelaircraft.org, we'll see you back here next week.